brown fat, optimizing 24-hour fat loss, thyroid function, why fat people are fat, and why Asians don't sweat. Stop fast life, different city. Friends of Freedom, Leo and I are gonna have a conversation as to why he's always hot and why is he always sweating. I mean, we are in Manila, Philippines, so it is a hot climate. You know, he spent most of the last many years in America where it's a cooler climate, so you'd expect to be hotter, but like, why is he so much hotter than me? Besides the fact that I've been living in Thailand for three years and my body's adapted to the heat. But we're gonna talk about brown fat, optimizing 24-hour fat loss, thyroid function, why fat people are fat, and why Asians don't sweat. Because all of these things are, are sort of related to each other. So first, why do you think that you are getting hotter than me and you want the air conditioner up higher and you're sweating more? Well, it's a very interesting So Despite me having more muscle exactly. and, and a faster metabolism, it should be the other way around. Actually, Tony doesn't know how much this bothers me. It's the biggest problem I have with being in Southeast Asia. I'm constantly hot all the time and I'm constantly trying to turn the AC on uh, higher. Now, obviously I'm fat at the moment and quite fat, but Tony has so much more muscle than me. He doesn't more... look fat at the top, but he's carrying it all around <laughs> his waist. We did a video before in slow motion where he's shaking his stomach fat and, uh, you know. It's a, I basically have a tire viewer on discretion, my Viewer discretion is advised. <laughs> That's true. But, so, I wanted to mention a couple of things. The first thing is the reason why I'm, but it's very interesting, right? I have more fat and he has more muscle. The muscle should be more thermically active. The issue is that apparently most of my body fat is brown fat. There's white adipose tissue and brown adipose tissue, wat and bat. And there's something called the browning of fat, which I've mentioned on my channel before. Apparently I have mostly brown, oh, I should mention what that is. So when the fat develops mitochondria in it, which are energy sources of energy in the body, it, the fat becomes basically thermically active. So it keeps you warmer. Now, how do you get brown fat from white fat? By being out in the cold a lot. I used to, when I was in my early 20s, I was living in London. I liked to smoke a lot, and I used to like to read also. I would sit out in the cold and smoke and read for hours and hours on end. I didn't realize that this changed my body, apparently. Years later, when I did gynecomastia surgery, the surgeon took out, who, well, I'll mention later, the surgeon took out my fat from my glands, and I saw the fat after the surgery, and I was in shock. At the time, I didn't know much about biology. I thought I had some kind of disease because the fat was dark brown. But it turns out that this fat is actually potentially healthy. The problem is it, it becomes brown. The fat becomes from white to brown by being in the cold or by being high, having high adrenaline levels. I have very high adrenaline levels naturally. I'm always stressed out. That's why I take propranol in the morning and so on. So my fat turned brown, which is not very advantageous in this scenario. The question is, should you go out in the cold to turn your fat brown? I'm not completely sure it's more healthy to do that. I think the adrenaline levels and the stress of being in the cold may be, but which you develop adrenaline when you're in the cold also to heat you up. You were gonna talk about thyroid. This does the same thing, like clenbuterol. I don't know if it's really worth it. it. Does it give you a net positive? But it happened to me by accident, sort of. There's supplements we can use to help activate brown fat and create more brown fat. Uh, off the top of my head, like green tea extract, EGCG, which is in code red fat burner, so that's one of the reasons why it's in there. And then uh, PQQ is another one. And then the, to explain why DNP is such a powerful fat burner, it causes your body to use fat as, to make heat. Uh, and so, you know, you're, you, instead of using the calories like normally, there's so many different functions in the body you can use calories for. One of them is to just convert fat to heat. And that's what brown fat does. And that's why I get a little bit annoyed when people talk about how unnatural such an extreme fat burner is because its mechanism of action is actually natural. No, no. Tony, people unjustly blame D DNP for stuff. Actually, it's a huge research subject developing what they call mitochondrial uncouplers. They develop through the UCP gene. That's actually how the fat turns brown. It's from adrenaline, but adrenaline affects the UCP gene, the uncoupling gene. So it's not... I mean, DNP may be dangerous for people that are not using it well, mm. but the actual uncoupling of the mitochondria is something that's looked toward for like improving diabetes, things like that in people. Yeah, so, so the side effect of which, of course, is gonna be heat. So it's one of the ways we burn a lot of fat really quickly. The side effect meaning you're gonna be hotter. So Leo's got this built-in benefit that he's running hotter. Uh, well, that's a drawback, but the benefit is he's actually burning fat. Like, where's the heat coming from? The heat's not coming from nowhere. When your body temperature goes up, it's coming from somewhere. Your body has to burn calories to make heat. So when I'm doing rapid transformations and we don't want to leave 
any pathway on the table. We want to make sure we're coming at fat loss from every possible angle. One of them is we want to make sure the body temperature is elevated. There's two ways to do that. There's a mitochondrial uh, uncoupling, uh, which is the same as brown fat or activating brown fat, creating more brown fat or using something like DMP. And then the other way is the thyroid. So I've noticed that when people have a very slow metabolism, they put on fat easy. It's very hard for them to lose fat. They oftentimes have a very slow thyroid. And then when I give them T3, not recommending that for everybody, that's not necessarily the optimal approach. There's plenty of other approaches like T2, T4, iodine, natural ways to increase your, your thyroid and your metabolism. But how do you think your thyroid is? Like that's another component. It's, do you think it's just your brown fat causing you body temperature to be higher and burn more fat? Yeah. Or do you think you also have a fast thyroid? No, no, I have a normal thyroid. And in fact, I'm very concerned about thyroid disease because papillary thyroid cancer is increasing around the world. One issue with taking iodine is that although having low iodine levels is bad for your thyroid, taking more iodine can cause your thyroid to grow through the TSH receptor. So it's a little bit concerning. The other thing I wanted to mention- But most people are probably deficient in iodine. So adding a little bit of iodine is probably usually a good thing. They are in the, in the East and in other areas of the world, but now in the West, we are actually mostly iodine. Because we have iodized salt? Exactly. That's enough exactly. iodine? It's the iodized salt. It's not necessarily enough. I mean, you could speed it up if you want to manipulate your body, but- What about bodybuilders using like Himalaya sea salt? You know, that, that has a lot less iodine. I mean, it has iodine. It has a lot of minerals in it, but but maybe actually there is a benefit to table salt that is iodized and has more iodine. If we're a bodybuilder eating super clean and we're, you know, we're depriving ourselves of a lot of whole foods, you know, maybe adding some iodized sea salt or an iodine supplement might be helpful. Thyroid cancer does go up when you have low iodine levels. I mean, you could test these things, but really if you're in the West and you're eating food out sometimes, you're getting iodized salt, you're probably all right. The one thing I wanted to mention also, Tony asked me, why are Asians less hot than Europeans? They sweat actually, a lot less. Yeah, yeah. There's actually a gene called, well, actually, East Asians sometimes have this gene. But you, if you're talking about Arabs and, for example, Africans, they usually don't have this. It's called this K-I-T-L-G gene, the KIT-L-G. KIT-L-G? Yes, KIT-L-G gene, which is a gene found, actually, it's the reason that Europeans are blonde. The same reason that it causes people to be blonde makes them better able to tolerate cold temperatures. Mm. So this is the main reason that Europeans probably, well, not just the body mass, but this gene specifically and then i have friends that they just drench in sweat they're just sweating all the time and then other friends that that don't sweat at all but but the, the sweating doesn't seem to be an indication of body temperature like i think body temperature is is potentially one set of genes that, uh, and one of your different pathways and then sweating itself is another different pathway but one thing is for sure if your body temperature runs hotter or if you sweat more, you need to drink more water and have more electrolytes. Well, especially if you're sweating a lot more, more water, more electrolytes, really important. Dehydration is, is like, if, if people are trying to figure out what supplements to take to improve their performance or for health or anti-aging, like you have a free supplement that's available, water, drink more water. In particular, if you're in the sauna, for example, you know, Rhonda Patrick popularized the, the Finnish studies that show that sauna use can decrease like the likelihood of developing neurodegenerative disease by 50%, the likelihood of developing heart attacks by over 30%. Sauna use is very good. If you do it four to five times a week, 20 minutes at a time in a proper, like 175 degree Fahrenheit sauna. Mm -hmm. The thing about the sauna though, many people don't realize it causes, a lot of this works through heat shock proteins, but heat shock proteins are actually dangerous for the kidneys. Mm. So if you are in the sauna, keep a bottle of water with you the whole time. This is something I learned myself. In fact, to be honest, I learned it. I didn't research it originally. I was going to the sauna and I actually felt my kidney in the sauna once. It scared the hell out of me. Mm -hmm. So I started researching and I realized that heat shock proteins are particularly dangerous for the kidneys. So what, what's the takeaway for fat loss here? I think it's the thyroid. If it's, if it's deficient, then we need to bring the thyroid up and you can tell if your body temperature is really low, we can, we can take supplements and, and change our lifestyle to increase our thyroid. And then also brown fat. It's an effective way to burn fat 24 hours a day. And especially when you're in a cold environment and it's a natural way to burn fat. I mean, the problem is you're kind of limited by your genetics. Some people have a lot more brown fat than, than others, but there, there still is things that we can do like the DMP, the green tea extract, the PQQ. It's subjecting ourselves to cold environments. So our body becomes more adapted to be able to, to burn fat as heat. I, I wish I had a picture of my glands when they came out under over the gland, the fat. It was so brown, guys, you wouldn't like it looked almost black. So I don't I don't even think I have white fat in my body. 
It's ridiculous. By the way, the, every animal carries brown, different amounts of brown fat. Some animals have a huge amount of brown fat. That's how they stay warm in cold climates. Humans don't have a lot of brown fat compared to a lot of animals, and that's why a lot of the animal studies don't convert over to human. But the humans carry a lot of the brown fat in the upper back, the neck area like this. So one way to activate it is to subject that part of the body to extreme cold. So if you don't want to uh, subject the entire body to extreme cold, but you still want to get a lot of the benefits of the cold, you can put the extreme cold on the upper back and get a lot of the benefit. It's interesting how useful... Oh, by the way, there's also beige fat. That's completely true. Like, like the, there's stages of browning. And in the research, they call it beige fat also. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting how much the cold is beneficial for the body sometimes, like for sperm production. Mm. You know, Steve, our friend Steve, popularized the icing of the testicles, but he was doing it to try to get his testosterone going again. I did that years before when I was trying to, not trying to get my wife pregnant, but I was trying to recover from steroid use. And I found out that the cold really improved sperm production dramatically. Is it, is it Lucas or Steve that brought that out? I thought it was Lucas was the one who did the experiment on it. I doubt first, it. but <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have to check. That was an interesting discovery. I tell you what, that is one thing I decided not to experiment on. I do not like the idea of sticking my balls in cold there's water. There's underwear with like pockets for it. Yeah. I mean, there's plenty of other ways that are more convenient to increase sperm and testosterone production that I would use first. Like if I was already doing a whole bunch of other things and it's like, what else can I do? I can dip my balls in ice. <laughs> then. I would do that. Yeah, so there was one other point I wanted to make about brown fat that you said that reminded me of it. But um, I, I, think, I think the main thing, the, misconf the, the confusion a lot of people have is that brown fat, they think fat is bad, but brown fat is really, really good. If you could have more brown fat, take it. You want it. Because it doesn't take up a lot of space. It's not going to make you look fat. It's small but it helps you burn calories and burn fat much easier. So when you want to lose fat and you want to get shredded and you have brown fat to help you burn more fat, that's a huge advantage. I would be much more fat if I didn't have the brown fat. Like I've, I've eaten to my limit. This is as fat as I can get. It's not, it's not, I can't get more fat. Now you just eat more, you're going to sweat more and get hotter. Yeah, exactly. Well, and, and my metabolism being faster, my muscles being bigger, also burns a lot of fat and a lot of calories. It's the same thing. Like if you have brown fat, you're burning fat 24 hours a day. If you have a lot more muscle, you're burning fat 24 hours a day. So it's like, these are two easy gimmies. Instead of having to worry about doing another hour of cardio, there's ways you can modify your body to become lower maintenance and be burning fat all the time. And this is like biohacking. Like this, basically the fastest the body way to get maintenance. brown fat is like to take clenbuterol or to take amphetamines over time or to go in the cold. You know, people, there are studies of putting people in the cold to do this. All right. We swallowed all friends of Freedom Pioneers of Human Evolution. Subscribe to the channel. Let us know below in the comments what you want us to do videos on next.